today we're going to make a brie. We're going to cover the brie in puff pastry. And I like to pick up just, you know, a small one that is will fit the needs of what you're going to do. Um, the principles that I'm doing today will be the same for a small one as a big one or even a smaller one if you're just with a couple people. Okay, what they always do is wrap this in special paper that keeps the brie from preventing to dry out. We always save the top from our container. This will be our prize tool. What I like to do is just cut the brie in half and do it like this. And, oh, I love the smell of brie. It's always good just to make sure that your brie will not be too ripe. I'm going to be stuffing it with a fig and orange marmalade. I'm going to grab my expensive spoon and and just put some of that in the middle. This um, we sell in our delis. This is an awesome marmalade and I love fig. Fig and brie really works well together. Um, that's why I do that and I can't get enough of this stuff. What I do then is just close the brie back up. So now we come to the part, we need to roll out our puff pastry so we can wrap that over the brie. So what I did is I grabbed some puff pastry from the freezer section. That stuff works really good for what we're doing. Unfold your puff pastry when it is well taught, otherwise your puff pastry will break in three sections and that will be a messy product. Puff pastry sticks, so we're going to be working with some flour. And I just like to sprinkle some right on your countertop. And then I like to also get some flour right on your rolling pin. It's a nice time to get messy. And actually, my kids always love to help out like that. It's pretty cool. And we want to just roll it out just a little bit bigger than what it was. So we will have enough pastry just to cover the whole thing up. Now we're going to just fit it for size. I think this will be a perfect size. Now what we want to do is just to get it all the way to the top. The reason why I do it with this technique, if you go from the top to the bottom, when the brie bakes, it will always leak out and we don't want that precious brie just to go all over your sheet pan. Um, so we're doing it this technique. Now, I like to work with um, a nice pastry cutter and just, you know, cut around like a circle around your whole product. These pizza wheels are awesome. Okay. And then we save this for later. Okay. Now we need some egg wash. Usually I just grab an egg, crack that egg. And then with my brush, I'm gonna stir that up. I brush the whole outside with egg. Now, what I start doing is I pull this puff pastry up, okay? Then I grab the next piece and go like that. So you get that ripple effect. And then you do that all the way around your puff pastry. So you get that nice effect going. Okay, the next thing what we're gonna do is take a rolling pin, just roll that out just a little bit more. So, and then this is gonna be our tool that we're gonna cut up the top with. And that will be the cheapest cutter you've ever bought. Okay, now we reserve that on the side, okay? And then what we do now is brush your whole brie with this egg wash. What this will do is will help you glue everything together. Plus another thing, there is the eggs will brown up and make a nice shiny layer on top. And that is awesome, something 
that your guest will wonder how you did that. Next thing is we'll lay our lid right on top. Okay, and we can wash that as well. Now what is fun, I used a plastic fork just to put some more decorations on there. So I kind of scrape a design with a fork into the puff pastry, just like that. And when you bake it, you kind of scrape some of the egg wash away so there will be different coloration wherever you scraped and, and that will look really nice. Now because of the season I grabbed a cookie cutter that just fit the season. You know you can do this in different times of the year. So this is around Christmas time. So I grabbed a snowflake and I put that right on top of the product and just brush that as well and what I like to do is just give it a little bit more definition and I just go over it with the fork like that you know that's a nice brie um, the next thing that I will do is put it on a sheet pan and put it in the oven. I like to put this in around 400, 425 degrees. At that temperature, the puff pastry will puff up nicely. When that starts to puff up, then you just turn your heat down to probably 375 so you can bake off the rest of your brie. Okay, and now at this moment, I think it is about time to check our brie. And oh, look at this, it's a wonderful looking brie and there's always a little chance of the puff pastry to break that it leaks out a little bit but this really limits the amount that baked out and I think this is a wonderful example what a brie should look like.